If it's complicated, I'm not using it. Think about how much effort some people go into their Notion dashboards. Imagine if they put that much effort into themselves. Someone had to say it. You get shit done by I think people overcomplicate Notion. There, I said it. They overcomplicate it, it becomes this thing that they have to manage, they don't actually get any work done, and ultimately end up being really resentful about it. Was that triggering? Did I trigger you? Sorry. <laughs> It's just, I speak from experience. Notion really only started working for me when I, one, stopped using other people's templates, learned how to actually use Notion, which meant I then knew how to set up and manipulate Notion to reflect what I needed in a perfect so-called workflow. Two, when I stopped getting distracted by the aesthetics of it all. And three, just kind of kept it simple, really. Because if it's complicated, I'm not using it. So in today's video, we will, yes, have a tour of my clean and minimalist Notion setup. But also along the way, I will throw in a few quick and easy tutorials of the main features that I use in Notion to help me get the most out of this software. And hopefully in sharing them will help you to do the same. Now, quick disclaimer, I know I just shot on templates and that that's not really what I meant to do. There are some incredible templates out there and I've used other people's templates as inspiration for my own. But I suppose I was also guilty of not really committing to the template or figuring out exactly why they worked and how they worked. So with that in mind, yes, I have a template down below, but it will actually mean diddly squat to you if you don't know how to use the features in it. So, just, I'm just saying, I've said it before and I'll say it again. You could have the prettiest, most aesthetically pleasing Notion dashboard, but you could also, in the time that it took to find that perfect GIF or widget or whatever, have gotten your shit done. Someone had to say it. And that's the basic crux of my philosophy as somebody who needs to get shit done, is that you get shit done by doing the shit that you need to get done. Yes, it really helps to have a place like Notion to list and track all the things that I need to get done, but ultimately I'm the one who has to do them. So, um, I mean, think about how much effort some people go into their Notion dashboards. Imagine if they put that much effort into themselves. I guess we'll never know. Wow, I am fiery today. What was in this coffee? But yeah, as a student, a content creator and a teacher, and as a woman with the intense and frequent female urge to track things, Notion does, Notion and I get along pretty well. Okay. We begin with the dashboard. Groundbreaking. This is where I hang out most of the time. And as you can see, it's clean, it's simple, and it's to the point. And that is because, as I've already reiterated, the busy maximalist approach does not work for me. GIFs and widgets and, you know, pretty pictures might give you vibes. They're giving me heart palpitations, so no thank you. First, I'm a huge fan of affirmations, so I always have one on my dashboard and I edit it from time to time. Underneath this, I have a very simple table which has a basic weekly outline in it. To the side of this, I have a handful of the pillars in my life that I use constantly and need easy access to which is why they're here on the dashboard but there are other areas of my life which i call pillars that are in the main pillars page and i access them there whenever i need to and then underneath that okay the piece de resistance and giving it to you straight up it's the everything calendar since notion updated their database functionality i now just have one dashboard to track everything hence the name the everything calendar okay and whether that be a task that I have to do, a standalone job in the house, if it's a video I want to create for YouTube, it goes into this everything calendar. And that is because Notion has now made it super easy to filter these databases in a way that allows you to only see what you need to see and where you need to see it. So we'll see, for example, that on my PhD page, I only see tasks in this everything calendar that are related to my PhD. And we'll have a look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But with regards to the appearances of the everything calendar here on my dashboard, it appears three times. The first is just a general inbox. So when I'm out and about and I have a thought, doesn't happen that often, or there's a piece of content that I like and I want to save it in my Notion, this is where it goes. 
no tags, no dates, no nothing. It just goes in there to be sorted at a later point. As soon as I'm in Notion on my desktop, I go through this inbox regularly and either do it, or if it's not an immediate to-do, it'll get assigned to a certain area of my life. And then if it gets assigned either a, an area of my life, which I call pillars, or a date, it moves out of that database. The second appearance of the Everything Calendar is tasks that I need to do this week. And again, it's the exact same calendar. I've just taken the name away um, from it. You can do that by clicking on show database title or hide database title. This appearance of my everything calendar to only show tasks that have a date within the next week. Final iteration of my everything calendar is what I need to do this month. So I don't like hard and fast deadlines. They don't really suit me and my chaotic brain. I like to keep things somewhat flexible, which is why I just have a this week and a this month. That lack of tracking every single detail for every single day really helps me to actually use my Notion on a daily basis. Okay, some tutorials for this dash page that you might want to use yourself. First, obviously this everything database. So let's pretend that we've got setting things up for the first time. So I would call this page my dash and I'd just keep it blank for the moment and I'd create a page and call that page the everything calendar. You have an option then to make this page a database and that is what we're going to do. We're going to select table. It'll give you the option to set up a new database within this one and that's what we're going to do. The various properties that I use um, are the name. I don't use tags so I'm going to delete that. The date and I also have um, a, like a, a, a checkbox. Something else that I have, but it's probably overkill because I don't really use it that much. Um, but I got the idea from fellow PhD student, Temi, whose profile I'll link down below, is this idea of a priority um, property just to give a visual indication of how important um, a task is. Okay, now I did kind of lie about the whole just using one database thing, but I also didn't. This is the database that I use to track everything. However, I do set up one other database just to store the pillars in my life. And that's what we'll do now. We're gonna go back to our dash. We're gonna set up a second page called pillars, turn that into a table, new database, and then an example of a life pillar would be college or home life. Uh, career, health and fitness, you get the gist. Not quite done, we want to make a connection between this database and our everything calendar. So what we'll do is we will create a new property called a relation. It's down in the advanced property section. We're going to connect it to everything calendar. We want it to show on that calendar so we can see what task is related to which pillar and add relation. So now what you'll see in our pillars database is a new property. And if we go to that everything calendar, we'll also see that there's now a pillars category on that database as well. And that my friends is literally everything you need to get going with a very simple notion setup. The second quick tutorial I want to give you guys is in relation to the filter feature in the databases because that is how I am able to set my everything calendar to show me certain things for certain times. So let's go back into my dash and I'll briefly walk you through that. Let's just set up this general inbox again. I'm going to delete it. To add in an existing database somewhere, you press the forward slash button and type in linked view of database and you will then have an option to put in a database there. I want my everything calendar, but as you can see, it's extremely busy and I don't want or need to see all of that. So I'm going to avail of the filter function. I'm going to click filter, add a filter, where date is empty and pillar is empty. Let's briefly have a look at the filters on my other everything calendars on my dash. We won't remake them, we'll just have a quick look. So for to do this week, I have two ro rules where the date is within the next week or the date is today and then I also have the where the checkbox is unchecked so that I only see the things that I have left to do. And then I do the exact same thing for the this month appearance as well. I have the unchecked box and then I have date is within the next month and date is after one week from now because everything for this week I see in the appearance of the calendar above. 
The last thing that I use on a weekly basis is this template button on my dashboard. So what you can see here is the template that I've linked down below. And you have everything that was on my page. You have the three iterations of the everything calendar. You have the everything calendar and the pillars database up the top of the page here. But you don't immediately see the weekly table and the affirmation and to-do list blocks. The way you do that is availing of this template button feature, which I love. It allows you to regenerate a block that you use a lot, but to start again from scratch. So if I click on new weekly planner, I have everything that I need for the week ahead. This is just a template of my week. It obviously changes and on a Sunday I'll sit down and I'll input the, you know, the meetings that I have. And once th that week is over and I'm going to set up a new week, I will simply grab those three blocks and you can delete them. I'm not a hoarder, so I don't hold on to that shit. I will be deleting them. And then I just click on new weekly planner and they're there again. I imagine a lot of you are perhaps students. So let's go ahead and have a look at my student page, which is called my PhD and it's here on my dashboard. So like most students, whether you're an undergrad or a graduate student, there's a lot of information to be managed in relation to my studies. Let's have a very quick look at it before we get into the next tutorial. I am a PhD student and I have my working title and working abstract at the very top of my page. I think this was an idea first put forward maybe by Kira over at PhD in Productivity or Kaylin at Redhead Academic. But for me, it's really nice. It just keeps my current iteration of the thesis at the top of the page. And these are toggle, toggle blocks, so I can just click in and out of them to show them if I want. And then underneath, I have two appearances of my everything calendar, a short-term list and a long-term list. Again, making use of the filters and I manage the information that I have to with regards to my research via very simple pages. I've listed them here on the left, but navigating between all of these pages can often get quite tricky because I have to kind of go back to the dash and then go back into my PhD. And the way that I negate that just for ease of use, again, keeping things really simple, is the synced block feature. So you'll see that I have a red line going around this entire block. That identifies this particular block as a synced block which means that I can copy and paste it somewhere else. It'll look exactly like that. And if I edit this block in one or other of those places, the sync will happen across all of the appearances. Why is this useful? Well, it just means that if I'm like knee deep in a page, for example, if I go into my, if I go into my criticism and defense, I have all of the pages that were on my PhD page in the exact same place. So in that way, it kind of acts like a website banner and allows me to easily move from one section of my PhD work to the next. A synced block is very easy to set up. Let's go back to the dash and I'll show you a very simple way of doing that. So I'm just back on my dash to use this as an example, but let's say you have two blocks. You have block one and you have block two. Whatever, whatever you want to be together, grab it, click turn into synced block. And then if I click copy and sync and I go to perhaps my PhD page, and I, and I paste that, you'll see it there. Now, if I type in edit here and I go back to my dash, that edit is there as well. And then last but not least, I know aesthetics do play a big part in why people like Notion, and it's certainly what attracted me to the software, but I've learned not to overthink it. There are three to four aesthetic tools that I come back to time and time again and that I want to share with you in this video. So the first is highlighting a block and just turning it into a color. So you'll see here on the template page that I've kind of divided this column. Alexa, how do you say the word column? Sorry, I don't know that. Oh, this does not bode well. Fuck's sake. Oh, <laughs> shit. Let's try that again. Column. Ah, oh, shit. By separating it with a green banner and then two gray lines. The way that I do that is, I'll, if I create another one down, if I delete this, this one, I will start with a blank line. I'll click on the six dots and I'll make sure that the whole line is highlighted before I go down to color and select a background. 
and now you'll see that the background of that entire line has now changed. The little grey line that goes above and below it, I simply type, go down to the bottom line and I tap on my dash key three times and that turns into a full line. So I'm going to do that once more just for the top here. Let's talk a little bit about um, icons. So you'll see that the icons here aren't necessarily the ones that are included in the emoji keyboard. And that is because I source my uh, very simple black and white icons from two websites. The first website is Icon Scout, and the other one is Notion.VIP. Both provide icons for you to copy and paste into your Notion as follows. So uh, let's say we wanted to find an icon for our dashboard. Um, let's type home into the search bar here and we've got a number of options. So let's pick, or I like this dash key actually, so let's go for that. We're gonna copy it, go into dash, select add icon and Notion will automatically suggest one, but just click, click on that to change it. You'll be given the option of choosing an emoji or providing a custom one. And that's where we'll paste our link, click submit, and that is how the icon that you've selected will appear. And there you go. I know everybody's understanding and awareness of Notion is different and that I probably flew through some of the features there without delving into them and obviously focused on just a handful of them. I love Notion, I love how easy it has made my life um, in terms of managing to my to-do list and I love helping people figure it out. So you'll probably, if you're familiar with my other Notion videos, I do my absolute best to get back to every single comment. So please don't hesitate if you have a query or a question or you want me to explain something in a little bit more detail, just pop um, your comments down below and I will get back to them as quick as I can. I have a few more videos coming up on Notion now that I have the time to make them. Just things that I have found particularly useful and will provide a bit more of an in-depth tutorial as to how to do them. I hope this has been in some way useful to you. And I really hope that I have managed to illustrate a way to keep things clean, simple, aesthetic, whatever the fuck that means. The beauty of a software as flexible as this is that you really can make it your own, so don't be afraid to do whatever you want with it. Just make sure it doesn't become this other thing for you to manage. Make sure it's actually helping you get your things done. And that about wraps things up. Until I see you in the next one, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and boot the like button. If, if you found it useful, it's a free way to support my channel and it really helps. Take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.